Okay, guys, uh, I'm just going to think out loud here a little bit. I don't think there is quite another Victor Oladipo to be had in the trade market. But, you know, this Victor Oladipo trade for Paul George is obviously looking like one of the best trades in years. So in the younger, cheaper, locked up longer Victor Oladipo, you're getting the same or better performance as Paul George. And uh, it's just ridiculous. It's absolutely absurd, the steal that the Indiana Pacers got. A trade that was laughed at at the time. But who the F is laughing now? Who's laughing now, right? And then we have, you know, who's the next Victor Oladipo? Well, you know, Donovan Mitchell definitely looking like the next Victor Oladipo. A guy I didn't see coming whatsoever. And, uh, you know, who would you rather have, Donovan Mitchell or Damian Lillard right now? You know? You go down the line and you compare this guy, chances are you would end up wanting this guy over most uh, star point guards that you can think of right now, or shooting guards. So I'm not going to talk about Donovan Mitchell today. I'm going to talk about how you can look for a potential Victor Oladipo-like trade steal for your team this summer, just like Victor Oladipo was traded last summer. So what was it about Victor Oladipo that kept him so hidden? And that made him such a steal. You know, he was he was hidden on a bad team in Orlando, a terribly run team, one of the very worst run teams in the league, right? And then in Oklahoma City, he was stuck behind in the shadow of Russell Westbrook while he chased personal glory at the expense of building a long-term relationship, productive team effort with his fellow star, Victor Oladipo. A guy who's, Victor Oladipo's playing better than Russell Westbrook, guys. Better than Russell Westbrook. So it's unbelievable. And uh, it's unbelievable. It's really, really exciting, you know? And Russ, anyway, how do you find the next Victor Oladipo? You want to look for teams where the second fiddle type player with all his talent in the world is stuck behind some big star who maybe chucks up a bunch of shots or steals all the attention or who was drafted higher. So, you know, finding a real draft steal, I don't think you're going to find one as good as Victor Oladipo. In my opinion, Oladipo is a borderline top five player. He's like, he's the best defensive guard in the league, and uh, and, he's at a, and he's an elite offensive player as well and a number one option. And, you know, for building a team around someone, I would put him borderline top five. Okay, you can call him top ten, whatever, I don't care. But obviously... He's a guy on the rise, and he's a guy on an incredibly cheap, valuable contract. So I don't think you're going to find someone exactly like him, but I do believe there are other trade targets where guys who are overlooked, underrated, and uh, stuck in somebody else's shadow who's got a little more hype, a little more shot attempts, and uh, and drafted higher, you know, all that stuff. Draft position means everything, right? So uh, let's take a look. Uh, is anyone stuck behind... DeRozan and Lowry on the Raptors, who's just, you know, maybe Van Vliet can be a starting point guard for somebody, but he's probably going to get a nice payday. He's a free agent this summer? No. I don't know what his deal is. We can pull that up real quick. Van Vliet is a guy to look for. You know, the um, Raptors have a sick bench, right? And another guy, CJ Miles, who is a guy who was stuck behind... uh, Stuck behind Paul George in Indiana last year, right? And he's really shining off the bench for Toronto. Um, OG Ananobi, not a guy who can create his own shot. Um, CJ Miles, he's only got one more year left after this year. Uh, Jakob Pertl, a guy who could definitely be a steal in the trade market. A guy who's got starter ability and production, actually, while he's coming off the bench behind Jonas Valanciunas. So, you know, that could be some. that could be some guy some trade target for some team that needs a center and wants to get really good value. Uh, You know, give the Raptors something that they think they need. And maybe you can get a guy who's arguably as good or better than Valanchunas right now on a dirt cheap contract for the next, you know, and then after that rookie season, after that rookie contract ends, he would be a restricted free agent, meaning you can match. Another guy is DeLon Wright, but he's only got one more year on his contract. So that would be, uh, what is a team up qualifying offer? Oh yeah. He'd be a restricted free agent. Delon Wright guys is really coming on strong. Um, really coming on strong. And, uh, 
Yeah, he's averaging 14.5 points in the playoffs, shooting 50% from three. He's got all the length and athleticism you would want in a point guard, right? Um, but he's stuck behind Kyle Lowry, so that would definitely be a good value guy. You know, if he came out and developed into some sort of version of Drew Holiday, uh, nobody would be too surprised, right? Nobody would be too surprised. And it's very interesting. We've got Terry Rozier <laughs> possibly emerging as a better player than Carl Anthony Towns, if you can believe it. Carl Anthony Towns, one of the bigger choke jobs we've ever seen from a star in the playoffs, which is why the regular season doesn't mean jack. And uh, 6.5 points from your franchise big man, uh, that is complete garbage. So playoff production means everything. I'm looking at playoff production, even though we still have very small sample sizes this year. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter what you do in the in the regular season. It's what you do in the playoffs. Ask Damian Lillard, right? Ask Damian frickin' Lillard. So uh, who's stuck behind Kyrie Irving? A bunch of guys. And this is, this is why so many people want to trade for, you know, Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum or Terry Rozier, right? And Marcus Smart's going to have a pretty big free agent market next year, too. The Indiana Pacers are drooling over Marcus Smart. Marcus Smart and Terry Rozier, guys who have been stuck behind Isaiah Thomas and now Kyrie Irving, although Rozier is getting a chance to come out of the shadow, and Marcus Smart's going to have a chance this playoffs to make a big impression and to make tens of millions of dollars. Uh, 76ers, who is stuck behind um, Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid? I'll tell you who. I will tell you who. Dario Saric. Yeah, he's starting. But uh, he's ba very much stuck in the shadows behind uh, Ben Simmons and Embiid, right? And he's averaging 21 points in the playoffs, guys, shooting almost 50% from three in three-game sample size, you know, plus-minus of 9.7, uh, just ridiculous. And uh, this is a guy who, you know, if the 76ers go after LeBron and they need cap space or something stupid, right? This is a guy who can, not quite a Victor Oladipo type, but a guy who can be a... Uh, top 30 NBA player and he may even be turning into that right before our eyes so a guy who doesn't have as much defensive upside obviously as um, Victor Oladipo but a guy who's incredibly clutch incredibly efficient and a real nice uh, high IQ in you know, all around game intangibles everything you would ask for uh, what does his contract look like he's got two more years after this and then he's a restricted free agent so you can match any contract if I was a team looking for the next Oladipo type or looking for a serious steal and say you had some kind of star or whatever, you know, um, like the uh, Boston Celtics guys, you know, we have uh, Kyrie Irving and we have Gordon Hayward. Think about how awesome it would be for the Celtics to trade Kyrie Irving for Robert Covington and or Dario Saric, you know, um, let me see. Kyrie's only got one year left on his contract, so that's a problem. But, uh, Dar you know, would you rather have Kyrie for one year or Dario Saric for a long, long time? Um, something to think about, right? And Robert Covington being the other guy, incredibly underrated. Incredibly underrated. Uh, he's got a real quick catch-and-shoot three in addition to his elite defense. One of the better defending wings there is. Maybe even the best defensive wing in the NBA. And a guy who doesn't need the ball in his hands doesn't need plays for for run for him. Not high maintenance. He can't create on his own too much. But he's got a really quick, really efficient catch-and-shoot three. And a guy who's kind of stuck in the shadows behind some of these higher-hyped guys, the process guys like Ben Simmons and uh, Joel Embiid, right? So those are a couple names from the 76ers. Robert Covington and Dario Saric could be major, major steals for somebody trying to trade for him, trying to trade for them. And then Marco Bellinelli, a guy who was stuck on a really bad Charlotte Hornets team with Michael Jordan run, and then stuck on a terrible um, Atlanta Hawks team, right? Just totally dysfunctional organizations. And now we see he's probably making tens of millions of dollars for himself, and he'll be a free agent. So expect somebody to throw some big money his way. And Ilya Sova as well, although he's a little older, and uh, but he will get at least a, you know, $10 million one-year deal, probably. Um, so who else are potential steals in the trade market? <sighs> Let's see. You know, 
uh, DeMontis Sabonis coming off the bench for the Indiana Pacers. He could, you know, he could be a pretty decent uh, starting center for some other team, not in the Victor Oladipo level caliber player, obviously. Miami Heat, uh, you know, Kelly Olenek, just like, you know, how Victor Oladipo, he signed his extension, his rookie extension. His rookie contract ran out and he signed a very reasonable uh, extension, right? And that's what makes him so incredibly valuable for the Pacers. Not just that they have him, not just like he's playing like a borderline MVP candidate, not just that he's one of the uh, two or three or four best two-way players in the league. It's that his contract is also only $19 million a year. So here we have Kelly Olenek in that same Vic, uh, Victor Oladipo type situation, came off his rookie contract. Celtics very foolishly did not sign him, just like the Celtics might very well regret not re-signing Marcus Smart and letting two lottery picks in a row just walk at the end of their rookie contracts. Could be very bad. But um, yeah, Kelly Olenek, what a contract this is, right? What a contract. So he's got two more years. Uh, is that a player option? Blue? Yeah, player option. So he won't, he won't take that. But anyway, two years of Olenek, a guy who's coming off the bench right now, if you threw the right package together, I would very much uh, dangle someone like Kyrie Irving, considering we have all that redundancy in Terry Rozier and have money to re-sign Marcus Smart, extend Terry Rozier, and get a guy like Kelly Olenek. That would be absolutely awesome. Olenek, a guy who's basically a not-so-poor man's version of Al Horford, a guy who's been stuck at center his whole career, but a guy who's very much basically a star power forward with that small ball center versatility. And you get him next to a real legit big man like Aaron Baines, just like uh, Al Horford was not very good last year when he had to play center most all of the time and he had no big bruising center like Aaron Baines to absorb some of those blows. Kelly Olenek, a guy who's been misused for four years, Celtics never bothered um, signing a big bruising center. They always tried to make force Kelly Olenek to play out of position, to beef up awkwardly and unnaturally to try to be some beefcake Joel Embiid type center that he was never cut out to be. Just like uh, Dirk Nowitzki's career would have been very different if they had forced him to gain 20 pounds and forced him to bang and try to play like a traditional big man. You know? Um, another guy who... Uh, I don't want to push this too hard, but another guy who's been used out of position, I believe, and he's not nearly as good as Ke Kelly Olenek in all likelihood, is uh, Thon Maker, a guy who I always saw as a power forward as part of a twin tower combination, just like Kristaps Porzingis if you had forced him to play center rather than letting him play power forward where he's more natural. Um, Thon Maker, a guy who's stuck behind, uh, Giannis, okay, Giannis defends power forwards. And they're trying to force the very skinny um, Thon Maker into this bruising center type role that he's just not really cut out for. I would like to see him more of like a uh, Kirilenko type role, you know? A guy who, uh, a versatile, a versatile power forward who can defend centers and spots and can defend small forwards and guards and spots but a guy who doesn't have to deal with that physicality at center who could probably thrive a lot more at power forward. Food for thought. And, you know, Thon Maker's trade value has never been lower than it is right now, right? He's not even getting minutes in the playoffs. And he's on a dysfunctional Bucks team that's been dysfunctional for a little while. So not to say Thon Maker's necessarily going to be a great player, but, you know, play guys at the right positions and on well-run teams with more talent around them, and all of a sudden you might be very, very surprised. Um, who else do we have? Uh, okay, Washington Wizards, maybe a Kelly Oubre. Um, prob yeah, Kelly Oubre may very well have some untapped potential. I wouldn't trade a big star for him or anything like that. But uh, Mike Scott, a guy who's shooting like 80% or 70% from three in these playoffs, uh, is, is, I believe his contract's out right now, and so he's going to probably get a very, very nice contract because he's showing himself to be clutch in the playoffs. Um, Pistons, I don't really see a lot of talent. You know, they they really uh, made a mistake probably in, in drafting the uh, Luke Kennard out of Duke instead of some of these other guys. Uh, Charlotte Hornets, I don't really see anybody there either. 
uh, maybe a Jeremy Lamb or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, you know, maybe Spencer Dinwiddie is still underrated, you know, and maybe he can also turn into a poor man's Drew Holiday. His advanced stats earlier in the season certainly really popped out. And because he's now on the bench behind uh, D'Angelo Russell, but I think he only has like one year left on his contract. So, you know, like Victor Oladipo with his three-year contract, that was just so, so valuable and a big part of what made him valuable. Uh, Atlanta Hawks, like, you know, Tory on Prince, Tory and Prince, uh, but he's basically their most valuable asset, so he's probably not getting traded. Uh, Houston Rockets, who's to say that Eric Gordon couldn't be a Brad, Bradley Beal type player if he had more shots for himself, you know, if he was starting and not coming off the bench behind James Harden uh, and had more shot opportunities, who's to say that he couldn't be something special, but he is already 29 years old. He is injury prone. And I believe he only has one year left on his contract. Golden State Warriors. Is anyone stuck behind? Uh, I don't really think so. I don't really think so. Portland Trailblazers. You know, is anyone stuck behind the Chuckers? Uh, Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. I'm not really sure about it. That I don't really see any guys dripping with talent stuck on the bench behind those guys. Uh, same with Oklahoma City Thunder right now. And uh, Utah Jazz, no. Um, you know, Tyus Jones maybe can do something, but he's not even getting minutes in the playoffs, so that's a big red flag. He, he's probably just going to be an above average backup point guard. He's a free agent this summer as well. Denver Nuggets, I don't really see it. Um, Sacramento Kings, Frank Mason, but I think he's only got like one more year left after this. Okay, and then the Los Angeles Lakers I wanted to talk about. A guy who's got not quite uh, Victor Oladipo potential in all likelihood, but Josh Hart, guys, right? Josh Hart, a guy who's stuck behind Lonzo Ball, a guy who's well out of the uh, the limelight, and a guy who arguably played as well or better than Lonzo Ball this season and certainly shot much better as well. So... Um, Josh Hart, you know, and he's got this f three more years on his contract, then he's a, so if the Lakers are chasing after some star and they, you know, um, maybe the Celtics could, could trade, you know, like Kyrie Irving for, you know, uh, Brandon Ingram and Josh Hart or something like that, something crazy, try to make the money work. But, uh, I would not sleep on Josh Hart and his ability to potentially be a top 40 player when you factor in offense and defense, even if he doesn't emerge as a total star. Um, yeah, that would be something to think about. And so for one year left of um, Kyrie Irving, maybe, you know, somebody like Josh Hart who's hidden away, who doesn't bring that media sensation that Kyrie Irving does, he would definitely be some, someone you would want to throw into a package. Uh, but he, he could very much be a poor man's Victor Oladipo type. Right? Very much. Uh, who else do we have? Anyway, that might be just about it. I think I've talked about quite a few guys. Um, so, yeah, like somebody on a rookie contract, you know, Brandon Ingram, you know, with the way they're chasing after stars right now, uh, maybe he really thrives in some other situation. Dario Saric, um, Torian Prince we talked about, but he's their best asset, so he's probably not going anywhere. Uh, Karis Liver is solid, but nothing spectacular. And Sabonis, like we talked about, when he filled in for Miles Turner, I believe he did a very good job as starting center for the Pacers earlier this year. Um, but anyway, just looking around the league, looking at potential steals, potential bargains. Pascal Siakam, another guy stuck on the bench, right? Another guy who's probably got some more potential than then acknowledged and uh, Jakob Pertl as well as we discussed so anyway this is kind of how you can uh, look for uh, major steals in the trade market is guys who are stuck behind high volume scores who get all the limelight and attention and shots and who are viewed as not having enough help when in actuality there's there's guys who are very helpful on that roster they're just not being used just like Victor Oladipo last year for the Thunder uh, Dario Saric, man, he is flashing big time, big time. All right, guys, let me know what you think. Who are some real steals that could be had on the trade market with good contracts, 
untapped upside and who just simply lack opportunity in their current situation. All right, guys, I will see you soon. Peace.